Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation starts to occur after some type of skin injury or inflammation when the skin is left darkened and discolored after a wound has healed. This can be from your good old typical acne or sometimes even triggered by derma abrasion or a chemical peel. Whatever the cause, this video will go in depth with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or PIH, go over what it is, what it affects, what causes it, the features it has, and finish it off with the treatment for it. And this video idea was brought by Hira Mirza, who commented if I would make a video on it. Sure enough, now I'm here talking about it. Also, let me know what you would like me to talk about next. Happy to take some suggestions. Now, without further ado, let's get started. If you guys are new here, this channel is all about helping you make informed decisions as well as be in the know when it comes to your health and wellness. And I'd love for y'all to gently tap on the like button down below. And if you really like the content, then consider subscribing as well. Also, if you guys are on Instagram, you can follow me there too. Now, without wasting any more time, let's take a look at what is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. PIH is a type of hyperpigmentation of the skin that is mainly triggered by the way skin regenerates after inflammation. It's different than post-inflammatory erythema, which leads to pink and red marks after acne and is seen in more lighter skin tones. And it's different than melasma, which you often find in hormonal changes in the body. And yes, it can affect both the face and the body, especially those UV exposed areas and are typically flat to the touch. Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation can occur in anyone, but you'll see it more in darker skin individuals. Fitzpatrick skin types 3 and 4 to be exact since we got more melanin and produce more melanin for that fact. And it's clearly documented that excess melanogenesis and irregular melanin deposition are also more severely enhanced by inflammatory processes such as acne, for example, in darker skin. Some medicines can also cause it too, like those for malaria, your tetracyclines, doxorubicin, but I'm assuming that those wouldn't even apply to you because those are a little bit more rare cases. The darker the skin color though, the more intense and persistent the hyperpigmentation tends to be. In terms of what causes post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, most people will fall under three of the biggest reasons. Number one, acne vulgaris. Number two, atopic dermatitis. And number three, impedigo. There are of course other reasons as well. Contact and atopic dermatitis, insect bite reactions, psoriasis, burns, chemical peels, if you're thinking why on earth is there an overproduction of melanin that comes with all of this, you have to take a look at the pathophysiology of basal keratinocytes, which are your skin cells. When they get damaged, they release large amounts of melanin, more than they should, then they get phagocytosed and deposited either in the epidermis, which is easier to treat and can go away on its own, or the dermis causing a blue-gray discoloration of the skin, which is a heck of a lot more stubborn. And this is because it's much deeper in the skin. Let's take a look at some of the features while we're at it. You got the first one, which is Lichen planus actinicus, which a lot of the times happens on sun exposed areas of the skin where you don't think to put sunscreen, like the back of the neck. Next, you got the violin playing friction, which is also known as the violin hickey that happens to violin players who have to rest their instrument on the neck. Next, you got irritant dermatitis, which you can see happening to the knuckles. Then you got the inflamed cysts, which can sometimes leave you a long scar that takes a lot of the time to heal. And then you got the classical of oven burn, as well as photodynamic therapy. Now let's take a good look at our treatment options and what to do, starting with what's available over the counter. The first thing you want to do is protect against offending agents. So your daily protection against ultraviolet radiation is a good place to start. SPF 50 or more, wearing a wide brimmed hat, sunglasses that don't have metal since they absorb heat and disperse it back on the face, and seeking shade, especially between the hours of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. where the sun's rays are actually the strongest. Without any of these measurements in place, you won't get the most out of the treatment, which by the way, our first treatment includes those tyrosinase inhibitors which prevent melanin production. 
this is a good place to start out with. So products like azelaic acid and alpha arbutin, which I've made videos on as well, which you can check out here. For example, not sponsored, but the products that are a good fit in both of these categories are your Paula's Choice Azelaic Acid 10% and the Alpha Arbutin 2% by The Ordinary, which I've linked down below. Sometimes though, depending on the severity, you may need a slightly heavier lifter like tranexamic acid, which has been seen to diminish laser-induced melanogenesis, which I've also made a video on. And my current favorite tranexamic acid is the one by Paula's Choice with Bacuccio, and I've left my affiliate links below for all of these products. If you want to pick them up, you can down below in the description below. Feel free to check them out. But keep in mind, sometimes if you've tried these products and they haven't helped, topical retinoids like tretinoin, adapalene, and tazerotene may be the next solution to look at. In which case, I would speak to a dermatologist about to see if you're a right candidate for them. Because there is also the world of chemical peels if you've been consistent with topicals and they failed. They basically work by removing the epidermal cells containing the excess melanin. Glycolic and salicylic acids are the two big ones there. And lastly, contrary to popular belief, Laser therapy, one in particular that stands out to me is the Q-switched Ruby laser that was done on the Indian population and found it to be 70% effective, especially in those with PIH from acne. Curious to hear from you though, what have you tried that works? Are you still treating it today? Share with me down below. Also, if you found this information valuable, click the subscribe button down below, share the video, and until then guys, I'll see you on the next one.